Okay, what about dams? We need dams for water supply, we need them for flood protection. Also different kinds of dams. There are what are called gravity dams, that's like the one on the left of this picture, it's called the Grand Coulee Dam in uh, the west of America, northwest of America, on the Columbia River. And essentially it's a large, uh, a large casting of concrete that goes across a river valley. Very heavy. The one on the right is not a, a, an arch dam at all, it's a, a, a gravity dam, it's an arch dam. It's used in very narrow river gorges and it's in the shape of an arch, just like an arch bridge, but on its side. <coughs> And then the water is forced against the arch, and it uh, it transfers the load into the into the gorge on either side. And then there are things called embankment dams, which are usually made out of earth of some sort, quite often with a clay core in the middle to stop water seeping through them. Uh, and they tend to be very shallow slopes. Uh, so you've got broadly three kinds of dams. And what I want to talk to you about briefly is the. You'll have heard of Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. And um, what happened here was some flood levees, some canal embankments uh, were uh, subject to high loads, water level loads. And if you think about it, America is the richest, most technically advanced nation on the planet. And in eight hours, it was reduced to social chaos because of the failure of a very simple structure. And what happened when the when New Orleans became flooded, it, they lost electricity supplies, they lost water supplies. People then tried to buy water but they couldn't because the ATM machines weren't working because there was no power and they couldn't buy food or water and after a while people started looting. So you can see that the civilised behaviour of a normal city such as Edinburgh can be reduced to chaos if simple infrastructure fails. And the simple infrastructure in this case was something like this. This is not the real one. This is a model of one of the embankments. The uh, canal is to the left, and it's in a part of New Orleans called London South. And this model here is in a centrifuge. It's, um, it's actually built on its side, and they swing it round and round and round to um, replicate the effects of, of gravity at scale, because obviously a small model is not going to fail at all. And uh, what I'm going to show you is, as this thing is going round and round and round, they start to fill up the, um, the canal with water. So you'll see the water on the left-hand side will rise, and there'll come a point when something happens. In this particular case, they'd, they'd put this sheet pile wall, that's that vertical thing, uh, in the middle of the embankment, thinking that that would help uh, strengthen the dam. It, it does one thing, it, it, it stops seepage underneath the dam, but it, um, you'll see that it renders half of the dam utterly and totally redundant. So I'll, I'll run this, you'll see it three times because you might miss it the first time. Here we go. Fails once, and I'll just repeat it. So you can see it's failed. It's failed by the, the dam actually being pushed so hard it's uh, slid. Um, along the foundation. So how does that uh, happen? I'll, I'll show you how it happens, really. Or we can try and model how it happens. Not with uh, an embankment dam. This is a gravity dam. The same principle. So here's this uh, cross-section through this gravity dam. The water's to the right. Um, I've got this dam, which has got a sloping front face at some angle, beta. It's got a total height of big H, a uh, total width of W at the base, and we leave a bit of something called freeboard, that's little h, at the right-hand side. It's just to make sure that if, um, if there are any wave action in the impounded water in the, in the reservoir, it doesn't overtop. So it's just uh, to give us a little bit of um, safety against waves overtopping the dam. And if we look at, uh, well, let's, let, let's fix the freeboard at about five meters. That makes life a bit easier. And let me choose. I'll just choose to design this dam with an angle of 45, uh, 75, and then all I've got to worry about is how big is H and how big is W. So how am I to go about that? Well, I might go about it by thinking, well, okay, what are the forces, or what are the loads on the dam? Well, the dam itself will have a weight, uh, which will come down roughly in that line I've shown, because it's, a, it's not a rectangular dam in cross-section, because it's trapezoidal, the line of action or the, like the centre of gravity of this 
dam is to the right hand side. And the force from the water is acts at a third of the way up from the floor of the reservoir. It always does that in, in still water. It's always at a third because the pressure distribution is triangular. At the surface of the water, there's no pressure at all. And then it goes to a maximum at the bottom in a straight line. And the center of gravity of a triangle is at a third up. So that's the line of action that it takes. And then we think, OK, well, how can it fail? Well, it could fail by sliding. And what stops it sliding? essentially is the resistance between the dam and the foundation. And that's usually, a, easily say, a third of the weight of the dam it'll, that will exert. So what we've got to do is to make sure that the, a third of the weight of the dam is always bigger than that hydrostatic force. So that's, and if we don't, well, that happens. And the other way it might fly, fail is by, by overturning. So in this case, I do need to know where those uh, lines of action Ah, because uh, if I get it wrong, then we'll have a bit of a problem. So in this case, I'm worried about the dam being turned over at the, at the toe on the left-hand side here. And so it's important that I get these lines of action right. So what I need to know is the distance of that line of action of the weight of the dam from the toe, at that horizontal distance. I need to know the vertical distance of... Have you got a point out? Thank you, Great. I need to know this distance here. And I actually need, I didn't write it on the drawing, but I need, I need that distance there. And um, what I'm trying to do is to make sure that this force multiplied by this distance, which is called a moment, is bigger than this force multiplied by this distance. And if that's the case, then I know this dam will be safe. And I can play around with those two equations. If I go back to the previous one, I can look at that one and look at values of H and W that make sure that the sliding resistance is bigger than the hydrostatic force. And I can play around with the same values of W and H to make sure that the moment of the dam staying where it is is bigger than the moment trying to overturn it. And that's the kind of problem that you would, I remember doing this as a first year student uh, when I started engineering. So it's a, it's a practical problem that you can very quickly find a, a solution for. Okay, let's move on to 